Hi everyone, and welcome back to another VoiceFlow tutorial video. Today we are going to be learning about the prompt step, which allows you to create nonlinear conversations by prompting the user for a particular response. In other words, when the step is initiated, the assistant essentially opens up its microphone where it listens and waits for an intent to be spoken by the user. Now we're going to break down this video into four easy to consume sections. First, we're going to talk more about the prompt step to help you understand what it does. Second, we'll go over the difference between the prompt step and the choice step. Then we'll show you how to use the prompt step in your next project. And finally, we'll explain how to use the two options found within the prompt step, which are reprompts and no reply response. Okay, let's get to it. So here we are on a sample project that I've called Storybook, and we can see that on the combined block, which we've named Chapter Select, we are prompting the user with the question, what chapter would you like? Once that happens, the conversation then moves on to the prompt step, where the assistant's microphone opens up and begins listening for an intent. Now in this example, once that prompt step is initiated, the user can activate any one of these four different chapter intents that we've created. And so the prompt step pairs really nicely with the intent step in that it stops and listens for an intent to be activated. When that happens, the conversation then jumps to the corresponding intent step that matches the user's response. Now you might be wondering, well, how does the prompt step differ from the choice step since the choice step allows you to activate intents? For example, you could actually activate this chapter one intent over here from our choice step. But the difference here is that the choice step has a number of predefined paths or lines that work to funnel the conversation down specific channels. So as an example, we have the yes and no intent here, and we can actually set up these lined paths. However, with the prompt step, you can think of it almost like a choice step that has no lines or connectors. If you were to erase all of these different lines and it was only the choice step that remained, that's what a prompt step would be. It essentially sits and listens for any intent said by the user. So really, there isn't much functional difference between these two blocks or steps, but there is a big conceptual difference. With the choice step having these fixed conversational routes made apparent by these connecting lines right here, and the prompt step which foregoes any lines or predefined paths and instead listens for any intent spoken. With that said, the prompt step will make it easier for you and your teammates to conceptualize your conversations visually in scenarios where you're using intent steps to either switch topics or jump to a different part of the conversation. This may sound a bit complicated, but it is a lot easier to understand once we dive into a live example here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Great, so let's actually go ahead and pull in some prompt steps so we can complete this project. Now what's happening here is that when we ask the user using our speak block, great, what chapter would you like? It's then going to activate our prompt step right here, which will allow the user to jump between any of our chapter intents, chapter one, two, three, or four in any order. And so that's great, but what we want to do after that is add prompt steps at the bottom here so that after we jump to an intent and hear the speak block, we then once again want to activate another prompt step to get the assistant to go back into listening mode where it will listen for the next intent to be activated. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to lock the sidebar in place, pull out our prompt step, drop that in our combine block just like that, do the same thing for chapter two, and then another one for chapter three, and finally the last one for chapter four. Okay, perfect. So now that we have four different prompt steps in place, let's go and see how this works in our prototyping tab. Okay, so we're in the prototype tab, and now we're going to test out our experience. Now as we test this experience, you're going to see that we have a choice at the beginning with this yes, no intent, as well as the short audio, after we say yes, we're going to hit our speak block, which will ask what chapter would you like? And from there, we're going to prompt the user using our prompt step, which will listen for their response. Great, here's some more stories. Welcome back to Storybook. Would you like to hear a story? Okay, so that's great, and I'm going to say yes. Great, what chapter would you like? So here we can say, chapter one and hit enter this is chapter one 
Great, so now you can see we are on the prompt step. So now let's try chapter four. This is chapter four. Awesome. So now let's head over to chapter two. This is chapter two. Fantastic. So we can see that we've created a nonlinear conversation here because we're using the prompt step to jump between all of our different intents. Now let's go ahead and learn about two other features available within the prompt step. So hopefully now you have a good grasp of what the prompt step does and how to use it. But now let's show you two other helpful options you can use within the step itself. So we'll head back into our design tab here. And when we open up the prompt step, you'll see that we have two options here. We have the reprompt option. And we also have the ability to add a no reply response. And so these are two different ways to do error handling in voice flow. So with the reprompt option, we can actually go in and add multiple different reprompts. And you'll see this is very similar to the speak step. So I'm going to add this no match one. And so what this is going to do is if the user doesn't say any of the available intents, so they don't say chapter one, two, three, or four, then we're going to want to reprompt them with another question where we'll say, please say chapter one, two, three, or four. So this reprompt will give them that hint or nudge to push them to the next step in your experience. So I'm going to delete this as we only need to have one reprompt in this case. And here we go. So if the user does not say any of the available intents, we're going to have a reprompt in place now. Okay, now if we go back to the reprompt step, we can go in here and we can add a no reply response. So no reply response is triggered when the user doesn't say anything when prompted. And so this option allows us to add a reprompt when this occurs. And so we can go in here and write, sorry, I didn't get that. Please say chapter one, two, three, or four. Okay, great. So now we have full error handling for our chapter selection prompt in that we have set up a reprompt as you can see here, we could add more if we wanted to, but we're only going to have one for now. And we've also added a no reply response. So now we are fully covered in the case that if a user does not say any of the expected intents, they're going to get a reprompt. And if they do not say anything at all, they're going to get a no reply response. If I want to delete the no reply response, I can do that here. And if I want to delete the reprompt, I can remove it by dragging it down here. And so those are the two options available to you in the prompt step. Now that we've gone over the prompt step, let's go over a quick summary of what we learned. The prompt step allows us to create nonlinear conversations. It is similar in nature to the choice step, but the difference is it is void of any output lines or predetermined paths, as it allows the user to jump to any available intent step. This was showcased in the example we tackled, where we used the prompt step to jump between any of the available chapter intents. Now, as we mentioned previously, you could still achieve this functionality with the choice step. However, the prompt step is more visually intuitive when building out nonlinear conversations. Finally, we went over both reprompts and no reply response, both of which are available options in the prompt step. Great. That's all we have left for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.